kitchen. We're going to be making some fish tacos today. I've got a beautiful piece of wild caught local barramundi here and we're going to get that marinating and then we're going to make some spinach wraps. We're going to make a coleslaw, just a really simple um, vinaigrette dressing coleslaw. And then we're also going to make a chili mayo. All right, let's get started. Okay, for the marinade for the fish, we need a bunch of spices and we need a lime. So we might go ahead and zest the lime first. Um, so use your pet potato peeler and peel the zest straight into the bowl. Okay, we'll put that aside for the juice um, for the marinade. Now I'm going to also grind up some cumin seed because I don't have enough powder. So I'm going to use, let's see, I'm just going to get about a teaspoon of the seeds. I'm just going to put it in with the zest because like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a bit chunky in this recipe, um, it's totally okay. So let's just get this going first on speed 10. Okay, so I've just done a minute on speed 10. Um, and then I'm going to add the rest of the of the spices. I'll just show you that. So you can see that's very fine. Um, just scrape down the sides. It smells amazing already. Okay, now in here I have half a teaspoon of garlic powder. So use a good quality um, preservative free garlic powder if you can. Um, half a teaspoon of chili flakes, or you can use some um, chili powder if you prefer. I've got um, a little bit of cumin powder because I'm using up the rest of that's in my jar. So basically you need two teaspoons of cumin powder. So I've got a teaspoon in here and a teaspoon in here. And two teaspoons of smoked paprika. And okay, we're going to add that into the bowl. We need some... Oh, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper as well. So I've got that in there already. Uh, we need some salt and pepper. So just half a teaspoon of fine sea salt or pink flake salt. Those are great options. And then we'll put in some black pepper. Now that's really to taste. Depends how much pepper you want. I love pepper, especially if it's a good quality Australian grown pepper like this one. And um, so I use probably, I use close to half a teaspoon, but you can use a quarter of a teaspoon if you, you know, if you don't like too much pepper. All right, now we need the juice of one lime. If you're using a Thermomix, the easiest way is just to cut off the white part of the peel and pop the whole lime in. So let's do that instead of juicing it. Okay, so there we go, just pop that in. And we also want some olive oil, but what I might do is blend that first and then add the olive oil. Let's do that. Okay, so I just blended that for seven seconds on speed seven. It's easy to remember. And again, um, you can see that there is some bits, but it doesn't matter as it's a marinade. Scrape that down and we'll add the olive oil. Okay, so we've got three tablespoons of olive oil. A good quality extra virgin olive oil is what you want. And just mix that gently. You don't need to whiz it up. Speed three for a few seconds. We're just going to remove that to a bowl. Can you see that beautiful smells so good. It's just a really delicious marinade for fish. And you can use this um, marinade for fish even if you're not making fish tacos. Um, just marinate the fish for up to 20 minutes. You don't want to go too much longer than that. And then you can fry it in a pan with some olive oil or ghee and um, just get gorgeous flavour. Now I just cut the fish into pieces 
This is going to be flaked. So it really, you know, you don't have to be too pedantic, but just even sized pieces. So I usually do sort of, I guess three to five centimeter chunks um, and pop those into the bowl with the marinade. If you find any bones in the fish, this is the time to get rid of them because you don't want them all through your fish tacos. All right. Okay, so we'll just mix that together. Make sure that the fish is all coated in the marinade. And I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge to um, keep it from you know, getting too warm um, while I make the wraps. Okay, let's get started on the wraps. Now, um, just a little cooking tip. When you buy coconut flour, you will notice that sometimes it's really coarse and sometimes it's really fine. And this really does make a difference with the end result of your cooking. So with these wraps, um, I've really noticed that if the coconut flour is really coarse, you won't get as um, a wrap that holds together quite as well. So what I often do is take my coconut flour and put it into a really dry bowl and just mill the coconut flour down a bit more until it's really fine. If you make your own coconut flour, you would have already done that and it would be beautifully fine like a powder. But if you buy coconut flour, just check it because sometimes it's almost like desiccated coconut. It's very um, coarse. So we want that to be really fine. So if yours is coarse, just give it a bit of a blitz in the thermomix first and then pop it back into your container. So we'll just go ahead and do that on speed 10. seconds should do. Okay, so that's a lot finer now. It's more of a powder. So I'm going to pop that back into my dish. Okay, we need four tablespoons of coconut flour. So just scoot the top off like that. Pop it in. One, two, Now we need to add 120 mils or grams of water. I'm just gonna set the scales. Okay, there's 120. We need eight eggs. So you can use eight whole eggs, or if you've been making something with a lot of egg yolks, like Russian custard, which is one of my favorite recipes, um, you may have a heap of egg whites in the freezer that you need to use up or in the fridge. Um, so you can use two egg whites in place of one egg. So in this recipe, you use 16 egg whites um, if you have heaps of egg whites. Otherwise, eight eggs. I find it really handy to have recipes that use egg whites because if you are on a gut healing diet at all, um, you will be having a lot of egg yolks. They're very, very good for healing the gut. Okay, so we've got... I'll just crack them into a cup first so you don't get any eggshell into the thermi. So you don't want eggshell wraps, that wouldn't be nice. All right, we want to add a teaspoon of salt or so. No need to measure that too carefully. Um, and then we need 100 grams of baby spinach. And that is that much. I know, it's a lot, right? 100 grams doesn't sound like a lot, but it is when it's baby spinach. I already measured this one, so I'm just gonna pop that straight in. And then we just need to blend that up. So it was coconut flour, water, salt, eggs, spinach, just five ingredients. So we just wanna blend that for a minute on speed eight. sit for a minute and then we'll get started on the wraps. 
Okay, the reason why I'm letting the wrap mixture sit for a little while is it does thicken a little as it sits. So we'll let that um, sit for like five minutes while I get the onions ready for the slaw. So what I'm going to do is use a red Spanish onion and I'm going to use maybe a quarter of a cup of onion. This does not really matter how much you use, it's just to taste. Um, but what I'm going to do is slice it really thin and then soak that in some ice water because that takes away a bit of the bite and it makes it really mild, which is great for a salad. So just really fine slices. And pop that into a bowl with ice water and let that soak for about five to 10 minutes. There's my water, there it is. Now with the coleslaw, this is just a really, really simple cabbage and red onion slaw with a vinaigrette dressing. Um, it doesn't take much time to make. If you want to, you can chop the cabbage in the Thermomix, just cut it into chunks and um, chop it on about speed four for maybe 10 to 15 seconds until it gets to the, um, to the texture you want. I actually prefer this one sliced really finely because when you put it onto your wrap, it sits nicely with the long strips. Um, if you have the little bits, it tends to sort of fall everywhere. So up to you. If you want to chuck, chuck it in the thermi and blitz it, you can. If you want to um, use your sharp knives and get some thin slices, then you can do it that way. So we just need about 300 grams of finely sliced cabbage. You can use green or red. So just cut that into um, strips that are about that long, just so that it, like you may have to cut it into quarters or thirds. You just want really fine slices Put that aside. Of another bowl, and we're going to make the vinaigrette. For the vinaigrette, we need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, or you can use um, a seeded mustard if you prefer. This is a fermented seeded mustard. Um, I'm just going to use up this Dijon mustard. And hopefully I have a tablespoon here. I'm kind of guessing as usual. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. There we, go. we need a tablespoon of honey. Okay. Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then we need one and a half tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and a good pinch of pepper. Blend that up. So just a few seconds on speed four until that all comes together. about 10 seconds. And there you have a lovely vinaigrette dressing. Now what I'm going to do is just pop the cabbage into the Thermomix bowl to coat it with the dressing. Just get, get it off the lid as well. So you can see the onions have been sitting in the ice water for about five minutes. I'm just going to squeeze them a little bit in the water and then pop them in there as well. Okay. Now we just want to put it on to reverse so that we're not chopping everything. And just on speed three for a few seconds, just to mix that all together. Beautiful. Let's pop that into a bowl. 
make sure you taste it. If you think it needs a bit more salt or anything, you can go ahead and add that now and give it another mix. I like mine a little bit sweet, so if you want more vinegar than that, you can definitely add more vinegar. Okay. Let's get these wraps made. So here I have a 20 centimeter iron skillet. Um, any kind of heavy based skillet is fine. I wouldn't use something with Teflon. Um, because that is definitely not good for your health. Um, but if you have something that's iron or cast iron, um, that's well seasoned with a good surface, that's preferable. You can also use stainless steel. Keep the heat low. Don't go crazy with the heat or you'll find things stick. It's better to be a bit patient and let it cook slowly um, than to have it at really high heat and burn it and waste a few. So we'll keep, we'll start off on sort of medium high just to heat up the ghee and then we'll turn it down as we go. So you can see here I've got some homemade ghee. So ghee, if, if, if you've never used ghee before, I'm sure you probably have, but if you never have, it's basically caramelized butter. Ooh, so good. Um, so you melt the ghee, you melt the butter, unsalted butter down in your thermi or on the stove top and you cook it until it caramelizes and the milk solids at first will be floating on top like a white film and then they'll sink to the bottom and you'll get these beautiful dark brown crumbs on the bottom of the um, thermomix bowl and then you know it's ready um, and then you just strain those off and you're left with the ghee. So it's very hot weather here right now so as you can see it's very melty. I don't keep it in the fridge, I keep it in the pantry and um, it's just so good for cooking and frying because it's a really high smoke point you're not you you know you you're going to be pretty unlucky to burn it so um, keep your heat to medium or low and just a couple of teaspoons of ghee in there and we'll start cooking these wraps okay so spread the ghee over the base of the pan once you can feel the warmth in the pan then you can go ahead and pour some batter in so you only want to pour in about half a cup um, when I first started making these, I would measure half a cup and pour them in. Now I just have the idea of how much to do. So you see it's a bit foamy on top, but don't worry. Okay, so it will start to sort of go bubbly like scrambled eggs because it does have a lot of eggs in it and just let that cook on low heat. So I'm turning that down now and I'll just let that cook. So as it cooks, you, you may want to just um, sort of swirl the mixture in the pan so that it's even and so that it's all cooking. And that's how big my flame is. I'll probably turn it down a little bit more soon as the pan heats up because cast iron really holds the heat. So I'll just let that cook a bit longer. Once you see that that's set on top, you see that it's starting to set and it's not moving anymore then you can turn it over Woo! i think i got that on me <laughs> always wear an apron <laughs> okay so you can see that that's kind of like an omelette um it's kind of like a really thin omelette crepe but it works really well as a wrap so you don't need long on the other side um, because it's mostly cooked through. Let's see if that's ready. Yeah. So there you go, spinach wrap. All right, so that's really hot now. I'm turning that right down to low. I find with cast iron, sometimes you have to turn it off and on um, if it gets too hot, just turn it off for a minute. So two teaspoons of ghee or olive oil in between each wrap. This, once you've covered the base there, then just give it a little tilt. Tilt the pan a bit to make it all even. And then let it cook. 
Okay, so while that cooks, we're going to cook the fish in this thermomix over here. So I'm going to steam the fish in the Varoma. So let's get started with that. Firstly, you just want to put water up to the 500 mil mark or you can weigh in 500 grams of water. I usually just use the markings on the bowl and then pop that onto the thermi. I'm going to use the Varoma. You can put some of the fish in the bottom and of the dish and some in the tray. Just keep your lid underneath to catch the drips. turn over your wraps at the same time. <laughs> I might just turn that off for a minute because it's getting really hot. So with the Varoma, it's best to put the thicker pieces on the bottom and the thinner pieces on top. So you can see I leave a gap between the pieces. And um, so it's plenty of room for the air to get through. Now, if there's much left of the marinade, just go ahead and put it over the fish. Lid on. And then we just want to set that to 20 minutes for Roma temperature speed two. So back to our wraps, we've got two here. This makes about eight wraps, this recipe. And they're quite filling. So generally I serve one wrap per person because by the time you fill them with everything, there is quite a lot in there. Right, I'll turn that back on. Just on low. Let's see if this fish is done. So just lift the lid away. Pop it down here. First of all, I'll just take that one off. And then you just pull the fish apart. So you can see that that just flakes apart really easily. So that's done. All right, so I'll just pop all this into the dish. And we can flake that in the Varoma dish. Um, that way, if there's too much moisture, it will drip, just drip down into the lid. So I'll do that. Just basically stir it with a fork and it will all flake apart. Okay, so there we go. That's ready. Okay, let's make the easiest mayo ever. So first of all, crack two eggs into a bowl, gently, so you don't burst the yolks, like that. And then just lift out the yolks like this and pop them into your thermi. Save that for another dish. Okay, we need a, a teaspoon of mustard, and as you noticed, I used up all my Dijon mustard. So now I'm just going to use a teaspoon of seeded mustard. It really doesn't matter what kind you use. Whatever you prefer is fine. We want a good pinch of salt, sprinkle of pepper, just a little bit of honey. You, I usually put in about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of honey. A teaspoon of apple cider vinegar also or a teaspoon of lemon juice I prefer to use apple cider vinegar because sometimes lemon juice isn't as acidic as the vinegar and it works better if it's more acidic 
Okay, so we've got mustard, salt, pepper, honey, vinegar, and egg yolks, six things. I have to do this so that I remember that I've got everything. Butterfly, need that. Okay, and let's see on. All right, just mix that for, um, for about a minute on speed four. Oh wait, if you want to add a little bit of chili, you can. That's the one thing that I forgot to say. Um, so just like a quarter of a teaspoon, not too much. All right, now um, this is really the secret of really good mayo, is to make sure this is quite frothy before you even start. So you can see that that's really creamy and frothy. And now we can start adding the oil in. Um, I use, sometimes I use macadamia oil, sometimes I use high oleic organic cold pressed sunflower oil. That is not the same as sunflower oil that you buy at the supermarket in a plastic bottle. Do not use that. Um, it's a really bad idea to use vegetable oils and seed oils that are highly processed because they are not good for you at all and will cause you um, to have inflammation. So a uh, good quality cold pressed oil that's in a dark glass bottle, um, macadamia oil, the organic cold pressed sunflower oil, or you can use olive oil if you don't mind that strong flavor. I'm going to use macadamia oil. Okay, so we just get that mixing again on speed four. And the secret also is to start really slowly with adding the oil and you can speed up in a little while, but just start off slowly with just a thin trickle. And just let it drizzle under the MC and it will emulsify. As you can see, I don't actually measure the oil. Um, you can use half a cup of oil. You can use one cup of oil. You can use two cups of oil. It will just keep emulsifying. So really it's to taste. So I usually use about a cup of oil, which is about that much. <laughs> so if you want to measure it, you can, but I don't really bother. Let's see how that's going. It's looking good. So you can see I'm going quicker now. I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm going a bit quicker now. You can hear it getting thicker. Okay, so that's about it. Let's have a look. If you do have a failed batch of mayo, um, in case you were wondering what to do, tip it out into a jug, start again with new egg yolks, vinegar, mustard, all of that, but drizzle in the failed batch instead of oil and it should come back together. Okay. So there you go. If you want it thicker, add another egg yolk and then you'll get an even thicker mayo. But I want this one to be a pouring consistency. So I hope you can see that. That's Once you put it in the fridge, it will thicken more. So I need it to be a pouring consistency. Yum. Okay, if you like it sweeter, add a bit more honey. If you like it with a bit more vinegar, add a bit more vinegar, completely up to you. All right, so let's set this all up. Yummy, I'm excited for lunch. Need to cut up an avocado as well. Okay, so here's a bit of a close up and I'll show you how it's all done. All right, so you take 
one of the wraps. Hold it in your hands like this. You just need some, oh, we might start with the slaw. So you can see the slaw goes in first. Spread that along. And then we'll add some fish on top. Now, um, I like to add some avocados, so if you want to, you can do that. If you like um, sour cream, it's also really delicious on this. I'm going to add a little bit of lime on top. And a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we've got our mayo on top of that. And there we go. Fish tacos. So you just roll them up like that and eat it over a plate because it will drip. <laughs> Messy food is fun, right? Okay, so there we go. That's fish tacos with spinach wraps. I hope you make them and love them. And these wraps are also great for um, using for all sorts of things. So try them out for lunches as well. There's no nuts, no grains, no gluten. Um, and so they're a great option for those of you who need this kind of delicious gut healing food. Oh, I better eat it.